I uh, forgot to bring my store teeth. And so if I am not being understood, if you just wave a handkerchief, I'll try to do something about it. I asked my friend, a very recent vintage doctor, Shoemaker, to say a prayer for me and for you during this talk. And he said, God is with you. And I think you knew what you know what he meant, and it is reassuring. And I think in the spirit of the eleventh step, through prayer and meditation, try to improve our conscious contact with God. Uh, may I suggest a few thoughts on the three words of our assignment? God, we, and understand. And if you will listen with your heart, as I know you have during this whole meeting, rather than your ears, I think God will bless us. Man trying to understand God somehow uh, reminds me of a definition of psychiatry which I just heard a day or two ago. It is the uh, id being examined by the odd. And I think that that could be our breakdown of topics. The id, the primary reservoir of power, God. Examine could mean understand, and the odd is us. First of all, us. We are three things, I think. Alcoholic, Alcoholic Anonymous, and Agnostic. Alcoholic, which means to me that we have the tremendous drive of fear, which is the beginning of wisdom. We have the tremendous drive of shame, which is the nearest thing to innocence. Sackville Mallon, Honorable Secretary of all Irish alcoholics of both Ireland, likes to quote some author whose name I forget. And all, and he says, and alcohol doth, no, and alcohol doth do more than Milton can to make straight the ways of God to man. Alcoholics Anonymous. Not merely alcoholics, but alcoholics anonymous. Bill spoke last night of the outside bouncer in alcoholics anonymous, John Barleycorn. But I've always felt that there's an inside bouncer who is crueler. And that is a corporate sneer for a phony. And who of us is not a phony? I think that is in all groups, you have the problem of people of lynx-eyed virtue, and that is a drive. Third qualification, I think we are agnostic. I believe there are three groups qualitatively in AA. First of all, they are the devout. Who, to who, who didn't seem to be able to apply their old line religious truth, agnostic as to application. Then there are the rusty, the priest who passed the man in the ditch before the uh, good Samaritan helped him. A very good priest friend of mine who says, I really think that the first thing we shall say when we get to heaven is, my God, it's all true. I think all of us are rusty in some phases of either our substantive or applicational beliefs. And then there are the 
sincere, 18 carat agnostics who all who have difficulty with that spiritual hurdle. Uh, the second word is understand. And I think as we move from an obscure and confused idea of God toward a more clear and distinct idea, I think we should realize that our idea of God will always be lacking, always to that degree unsatisfying. Because to understand and to comprehend God is to be equal to God. But it will grow. I'm sure that Bill sitting in that chair and Dr. Bob, whose angel is probably sitting on that oddly misplaced empty chair, are growing in the knowledge of God. An old German saying is, and it applies here, very few of us know how much we have to know in order to know how little we know. And I'm sure Dr. Bob and Bill would certify that. The approach to this not understanding, first of all, negative, and the first step, as we examine ourselves, who was our latest God, uh, is uh, a, a fine approach to God. It was the approach of Peter the Apostle. Lord, to whom shall we turn? I think we should realize that there is... I doubt if there's anybody in this hall who really ever sought sobriety. I think we were trying to get away from drunkenness. I don't think we should despise the negative. And I, I know I have a feeling that if I ever should find myself in heaven, I think it will be from backing away from hell. <clears throat> now, there, at this point, heaven seems as boring as uh, sobriety does to an alcoholic ten minutes before he quits. However, there are positive approaches, and the twelfth step mentions one, I still weep, that the senators of the movement have dropped the word experience for awakening. Experience is one of the ways that's mentioned by the twelve steps, and in the second step, another way, belief. Now, experience can be two kinds, sudden passive insights, like Bill's experience, like the grapevine story of that Christmas Eve in Chicago. Those are all in the valid pattern of Saul having that sudden passive insight as he was struck from his horse on the road to the master. There are other types probably dearer to God since they are commoner, and those are the routine, active observations of what? I am sober today. I am sober today. This meeting this morning, uh, this convention this week, and as experience distills and condenses, it becomes suffering. The other night, Bernard Smith, chairman of the AA's uh, trustees, I get that hierarchy all mixed up. <clears throat> uh, said something which to me was so good that I took it down. He said, the tragedy of our life is how deep must be our suffering before we learn the simple truths by which we can live. Sometime before Whitaker 
Chambers became a well-known character. <clears throat> in his sister publication, he was on time then, he wrote in life an article called The Devil. And quoting Satan, Whitaker Chambers says this, here's Satan talking. And yet it is at this very point that man, that monstrous midget, still has the edge on the devil. He suffers. Not one man, however base, quite lacks the capacity for this specific suffering, which is the seal of his divine commission. Uh, the second approach, which is mentioned in the second step, came to believe. I've, I've known some of my Catholic friends who at that step said, well, I believe already, so I don't have to do any caming. And in a great burst of kindness, they kept drinking to let the Protestants catch up with them. Belief is uh, capitalizing on the experience of others. Blessed are the lazy, for they shall find their shortcuts. What others? Your sponsor. The AA experience of two decades on two continents. Newman says that the essence of belief is to look outside ourselves. Dr. Thiebaud seems to think that psychiatrically the great problem is the turning of our affection from self outwardly. Faith is hard, as hard and as easy as sobriety and has been called the greatest of our undeveloped resources. What experience should we seek? What, ex what beliefs should we accept in our quest for God? The third word then would be God. Bill Early wrote a letter, I have it, in which he said, as far as how the alcoholic shall work out his dependence on God is none of AA's business. Whether it's in this church, or whether it's in a church or not in a church, whether it's in that church or this church, is none of AA's business. In fact, he implied, I don't think it's any of the alcoholic, uh, the members' business. It's God's business. And the AA's business is charted in the 11th step seek through meditation and prayer to find God's will and to seek the courage to follow it up. And not in the spirit of propaganda and abusing this opportunity, but rather to share what I have found to be God's will, I'd like to offer some thoughts. I do believe that the problem half of this room has had in attaining sobriety, I have had in attaining belief and faith. Uh, where do you start? Well, I, I believe there's something to be said about starting at the nearest manifestation of God. Where is God nearest to me? Does the fish soar to find the ocean? Does the eagle plunge to find the air? That, we ask, of the stars in motion, if they have rumor of thee out there, not where the wheeling systems darken and our benumbed conceiving soars, the drift of angel pinion would we hearken, beats at our own clay-shuttered doors. Somewhere out in the sh 
swirling universe, light years beyond the reach of our strongest telescope, Halley's Comet is making its round. Some of us saw 1910. Some of you in this room will see it in 1986. Those are called the perihelion, the perihelion. There's a point at which they are closest, Halley's is closest. And obviously to study Halley's Comet now is a waste of time. It must be done at 1910, or it must be done in 1986, when it's close. Where is God's perihelion? Where is God's nearest? When is God's nearest? Is God nearest? Life magazine, in this recent article on the great religions and the great leaders, mentioned, of course, all the significant beliefs available systematic belief. Moses, Muhammad, Buddha, none of them claimed the divinity. None of them ever claimed that for routine purposes that God is visible on earth, save one. And that is the man who said, he who seeth me seeth the Father. That's blasphemy. A lie or the truth. He said, I and the Father am one. Before Abraham was, I am. And even to escape crucifixion, he wouldn't head on the accuser's uh, indictment, who felt that he was guilty of blasphemy. And his answer was to the claim, Thou hast said it. Dostoevsky says that faith in the divinity of Christ is the Christian faith, pure and simple. And down the ages, that has been the central belief of his followers. Of all the life series of religions, the Christianity claims to present God at the closest perihelion. We know AA's 12 steps of man toward God. May I suggest in God's 12 steps toward man, as Christianity appeals to me. The first step is described by St. John, the Incarnation. The Word was God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And he turned his life and his will over to the care of man as he understood him. The second step, nine months later, closer to us in the circumstances of it, is the birth, the nativity. Third step, the next 30 years, anon the anonymous hidden life, closer because it is so much like our own. The fourth step, then three years of the public life, closer to us because it met our cravings, our aspirations, his teaching, his example, our Lord's Prayer. The, four, the fifth step, but his emphasis in that public life was to people like ourselves, sinners, wine bibbers, poor, skid row panhandlers. The sixth step, the fifth step, I guess six, six. Bodily suffering, including thirst on Calvary. The sixth, the next step, soul suffering in Gethsemane. That's coming close. How well the alcoholics know and how well he knew humiliation and fear and loneliness and discouragement and futility. Finally, death, another step closer to us. And I think the Pieta, where a dying God rests in the lap of a human mother, is as far down as divinity can come 
and probably the greatest height that humanity can reach. And down the ages, he comes closer to us as head of a sort of a Christian's anonymous, a mystical body laced together by his teachings, whatsoever you do to the least of my brethren, you do to me. I can fill up what is wanting in the sufferings of Christ. I was in prison and you visited me. I was sick. I was in hungry and you gave me to eat. The next step, hence, the Christian church, which I believe is Christ here today. I think a great many sincere people feel, and they're in the room, they say, I like Christianity, but I don't like churchianity. And I can understand that. I understand it better than you do because I'm involved in churchianity and it bothers me too. But, actually, I think that sounds a little bit like, I do love good drinking water, but I hate plumbing. Now, who likes plumbing? Uh, um, and you have people who won't take AA, see? They like sobriety, but the so-and-so with AA. Uh, and then the eleventh step are several great big inch type lines or sacraments of God's help. And the twelfth step to me is the great pipeline or sacrament of communion. The word that was God became flesh and becomes our food as close to us as the fruit juice and the toast and the coffee we had an hour ago. Now, oh, we know the story of alcoholic flight from God and movement toward him. Lord, give me sobriety, but not yet. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. I don't think there's an AA in this room who isn't worrying about one of those steps. And praise God, Lord, let me make that step, but not yet. And I think the picture of AA's quest for God, but especially God's loving chase for the AA, was never put more beautifully than in what I think is one of the greatest lyrics and odes in the English language, written by a narcotic. And I think alcohol is a narcotic, so he might be able to make it. It's a poem called The Hound of Heaven that likens God to a hunting dog. Let me just pull off a few of the lines and I'll sit down. I fled him down the night and down the days. I fled him down the arches of the years. I fled him down the labyrinthine ways of my own mind, and in the midst of tears I hid from him. And under a running laughter, up vistaed hope I sped. And shock precipitated a down titanic glooms of chasmed fears from those strong feet that followed, followed after. But, and here's his description of God, with unhurrying chase and unperturbed pace, deliberate speed and majestic instancy, they beat, and a voice beat more instant than the feet, all things betray thee who betrayest me. And I'll skip, naught shelters thee who will not shelter me. Lo, naught contents thee who contentest not me. In the rash lustihood of my young powers, I shook the pillaring hours, and pull my life upon me, grimed with smears, I stand amidst the dust of the mounded years. My mangled youth lies dead beneath the heat. My days have cracked and gone up in smoke, 
have puffed and burst as some start on a stream. Now the long chase comes at last the end. That voice is around me like a sounding sea, bursting sea. And the voice says, in conclusion, And is thy earth so marred, shattered in shard and shard, lo, all things fly thee, but thou fliest me. Strange, piteous, futile thing, wherefore should any set thee love apart? Seeing none but I, God says, seeing none but I make much of naught, and human love needs human meriting. How hast thou merited? Of all man's clay, clotted clay, the dingiest clot, alack, thou knowest not. How little worthy of any love thou art, whom wilt thou find to love ignoble thee, save me, save only me? And this I find to so. All which I took from thee I did but take, not for thy harm but just that thou might seek it in my arms. All which thy child's mistake, fancies as lost, I have stored for thee at home. Rise, clasp my hand, and come. And the alcoholic or the non-alcoholic answers, Hope by me that footfall is my gloom after all. Shade of his hand outstretched caressingly. And God's answer, all fondest, blindest, weakest, I am he whom thou seekest, thou drovest love from thee, who drovest me. Thank you.